Okay, so let's take a look now at the controls of weather and climate, sometimes the causes I might call them. The first is latitude. So the higher you go up in latitude or the lower, let's say toward the South Pole, it's going to get colder no matter what. So why is that? Well, let's take a look. First of all, the Earth is round. See that? And if the sun hits directly overhead no matter what, the tilt, it is going to be very intense. However, if the sun's rays hit it at an angle or an oblique angle, the rays are going to be spread out. Just like this nice evening when the sun is starting to set, it's cooler, right? So that's really the only thing that happens. You know, if the earth were flat, just like this piece of plastic, guess what? The sun's rays would hit equal throughout the planet and weather and climate would be equal throughout the planet. Okay, so the fact that, in summary for latitude, that the sun hits right here at the equator and it's cooler at the north and the south pole, that basically, that differential temperature is what drives the weather system. So let's take a look at a few other controls of weather and climate. All right, let's talk about factor number two for controls of weather and climate. And that is the fact that the Earth has two elements that are basically very simple, maybe like the Greeks would have said. Number one, water. We've got lots of water, just like the oceans. And number two, we have lots of land, and that's represented with this dirty piece of steel right in here. Uh, I couldn't find an aluminum can, this will work. So you can see this is the Earth, okay? Now, I also have my cup of tea right in here. Mmm, nice and hot. Now I heated that up, let's say about 5 to 10, 15 minutes ago. It is still nice and warm. So water, as the sun heats it up, definitely retains its heat a long time. It has a high specific heat. Chemists give it a value of 1. Now something like steel, aluminum, the earth is going to have a much lower. You know, I kind of arbitrarily give it a value of, let's say, 0.2, but much less, whatever that value is. And that's going to be important when we look at why it is here in California with daffodils blooming in February and someplace, let's say, Kansas City in the middle of the country shivering in winter cold. Well, guess what? We have the oceans that have heated up during the summertime and all through the fall, and they have moderated our temperatures and specifically today, the winds are coming from the south and they're bringing that nice kind of tropical, you know, we're not getting the cold winds from the north. In the middle of the country at this time, we have, you know, the land has cooled down quickly, the sun is not hitting it very directly, and uh, that icy cold air is now coming into, let's say, Kansas City and keeping it pretty cold. Okay, so I have diagram now basically Kansas City. Now in the summer solstice, which you can read right there, it says that this, or indicates the sun is directly overhead. That's like the aluminum can or the steel. As soon as the sun is directly overhead, the maximum temperatures will be reached in Kansas City. And during the winter time, let's say in January, February, it's gonna be a lot cooler. So the temperatures are rising. Now, I drew San Francisco here on the next page, okay? And of course that is along the coast. If you look at that diagram, you can see summer occurs, but there's a delay. Why? Because the oceans take a long time to heat up and the water uh, moderates the temperatures in San Francisco. All right? So you can see the summer temperatures aren't going to be as high as later, let's say in the fall, where it maxes out. And that's because water takes forever to heat up. Now next I wanted to show you uh, basically another factor, which are the wind currents. Okay, the other thing is that, hey, listen, if the winds are blowing your direction, you're going to feel the moderating effect of the ocean. However, if you're in the middle of the continent, like Kansas City, guess what? These winds are not going to affect you. All right, the moderating effect of the ocean isn't going to affect you. In, fa in fact, you're going to get this uh, icy temperatures that are going to come from the north, and uh, it's going to take a while for the land to heat up. All right, so we're looking at the United States here. And essentially over here is the Pacific Ocean. And you can see that all this area of the United States, including all the way up in here in Oregon, Washington, will feel the monitoring effect of the ocean. However, if we pan over here into the interior, okay, we know that it's icy cold 
in Kansas City, the Great Lakes, you know. I was in Oklahoma for the winter break and it was quite cold there, at least for half the time. And then the other time it started to warm up. So we call those continental climates because the ocean is not very close by. And also number two, we go on back here to the Pacific Ocean, <clears throat> the westerlies blow in that moderating effect. Okay, so you can see this is Long Island. Okay, right here in Boston and Massachusetts in general, and of course Maine up north. You know, this whole area here is fairly, uh, it's about the same latitude as Seattle. Oh. And as we move down into the Chesapeake and this area right in here, uh, you know, this is our latitude in Northern California. We do start to get bomb years. You head down into uh, the Carolinas and Georgia and so on. However, in general, the same latitude next to an ocean, why are their temperatures much colder? Okay. And the reason why, if you live there, is that you're getting the continental effect here to the west. Okay. The Atlantic Ocean is not essentially bringing you warm water, warm temperatures, and the winds are coming from the west. Now, I want to show you something though pretty amazing. Is here in the United States, we do have tropical climates. Okay, so down here is Florida. Get a little glare here at this time of the evening. But the uh, Gulf Stream does come along from the easterly trades that do blow from the east now instead of the west. They move up here, they hit Cape Hatteras, and then the Gulf Stream goes all the way out to Europe to the northern latitudes of let's say Scotland and Ireland. All right, and so these folks down here, they do actually feel the moderating effect of the ocean and the Gulf Stream because the winds are coming from the east and the fact that the ocean currents are warm. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to come over here back to the west coast looking at the map. Our currents here in California, northern California especially, are quite cold. They come from the north, okay? We see a bunch of great white sharks swimming out there in the ocean right now. And that tends to actually dry out the air temperature. And in places, let's say like San Francisco, during the summertime and early fall, it'll still be foggy there because of the ocean currents. All right, so there's just a few more controls of weather and climate that I wanted to talk about. And one is topographic barriers. All right, so there I have a mountain. And uh, also elevation. So they kind of go hand in hand. So topographic barriers, if you're on the windward side here, you're going to get more moisture, okay? And so you're going to get trees. Here in the Sierra Nevadas, we do get a very green, lush, wet uh, west west side or the windward side. And then also, if you're going to go up, obviously in elevation, you're going to get snow, okay? And it's going to be cooler. The air is simply thinner. Okay, so that's kind of a no-brainer. Here in Northern California, we can go from Sacramento, our state's capital, which could be, let's say, 72 degrees. And then as you get up into the mountains, you could get in toward the freezing temperatures here in the early spring. Now, another thing, too, is we have Reno, Nevada, fairly close by. If you go up Interstate 80, uh, you can get on the back side of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Okay, and so I've drawn a picture of that. And you go over Donner Summit, which is roughly 7,200 feet, uh, where the Donner Part indeed got stuck. And as you go into the Martis Valley and Truckee and then into Reno, you start to see it really dry out. The air is actually sinking. The molecules are being compressed. As they're com being compressed, they're being heated up. It dries out the atmosphere, and of course, it's much, much drier. We have sagebrush. It's really just a different kind of place than we have here in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas, which you can see behind me on this lovely evening here in February. Um, and then we do have pressure belts. California in general is pretty dry in the summer because air is sinking. It rises wherever the sun's directly overhead. We'll get into that in chapter five. You'll see that on subsequent videos. And that air then sinks. There are times, like right now, where we have a dominant high pressure. It is keeping the entire West Coast dry at the moment. And we are having extraordinary temperatures today. It is 75 degrees, well, probably in the 70s. Not quite that, but it sure seems like that in the sun. So that concludes this series on controls of weather and climate.